Hello, everyone, and welcome to another wonderful episode of Medley Kids. I'm Chris. And I'm Kaylee. And today we are looking at the ghost of the Red Baron. We start off with the mystery machine driving through some really creepy barren farmland, and it zooms in on a for sale sign that's really cheap because apparently you can get this farm for about $2,000. Which is really cheap. Most cars cost more than that. So Fred, for once, is not the reason why they're in some kind of crazy little predicament. He's driving the van, looking back at Shaggy. You and your shortcut, Shaggy. This place gives me the creeps. Velma says it's like no man's land. And Daphne says it's not fit for man or beast. Or dogs. Scooby wants to make sure that everyone knows he's not a beast. He's not. He's Scooby. But Shaggy just can't understand it because last month, apparently he was here, and all these farms were green and covered with healthy vegetables, but now... And then he gets distracted because suddenly there's a whole lot of really healthy, juicy-looking corn. So somehow they have found the secret to growing corn and absolutely nothing else. Which is cool, because corn isn't a vegetable. I'm sure it needs something special to grow anyway. And suddenly a plane flies over... Dusting crops with fertilizer, as far as we know. And Fred says, no wonder the crops are so healthy. That's called foreshadowing. Yeah. And then there's another plane, and this one is bright red, and it's flying over. And Fred recognizes it as the kind of plane that the Red Baron flies. Which confuses Shaggy, because he thought the Red Baron was a beagle. I'm sorry, but a beagle is not the Red Baron. It is my other favorite cartoon dog, Snoopy, that he's thinking of, who is also not the Red Baron. He's the World War One flying ace. Now let's jump into one thing a little bit here, too. The plane that they're showing here is not the same plane that the Red Baron flew. It actually came out a few days after the Red Baron died. But it's close enough, and most people aren't going to notice. So there's Fred, trying to sound smart, trying to keep up with Velma, passing along wrong information. But there's an awesome Snoopy reference. I love Snoopy. Anyway, the Red Baron tries to force the crop duster down, and apparently as the crop duster is basically crash landing, the Red Baron almost hits the mystery machine and starts chasing them through a field of corn. Because why not? If there's corn, somebody's going to drive through it. They get through the corn field get out of there, stop out in a regular grass field. Their tire magically pops for some reason. It's not really important except for the fact that the tire pops. And the farmer comes up being upset because they ground up two whole acres of corn. I don't know if that's a lot of corn or not at all. Yes, it is. Okay. (laughs) I guess that's a lot of corn. The pilot of the crop duster is obviously unhappy and he quits and the farmer turns to a guy who's apparently named Sawyer we don't get an official introduction to him but he's apparently signed a contract to fertilize the corn and the farmer tells Sawyer he'd better hire a new pilot Sawyer points out that this is the fifth pilot that's quit just this month and no one else is stupid enough to do the job because there's a red baron ghost trying to scare everybody off Now, because this is a cartoon, of course, that is when you get a new pilot showing up. Except in this case, it's kind of a pilot and a half, because it's the Three Stooges. And Captain Curly comes up and offers to take the job and drops a bunch of flying comics and a learn-how-to-fly coupon. Apparently, he uses these special comics to figure out how to fly a plane. I wish I could read comics and know how to fly a plane. Mo decides to push him toward the plane and make him prove he can do it. He's like, actions speak louder than words. And Curly notices that the plane, which just crashed into a cornfield, is filled with corn. He's all excited and starts talking about food. So, of course, Scooby wants to join him and eat some corn. So Scooby jumps in the plane. The plane gets started and they start flying. They do all kind of loops and spins, and nobody yells out to do a barrel roll. I know. What's up with that? I guess this is before Star Fox, so, yeah. (laughs) Anyway, 
all of those tricks were because of Scooby, but the people on the ground don't know that. They think Curly is the best pilot ever. Which, I guess in some weird way, means that they all think that Scooby is the best pilot ever now. But they're sure that Captain Curly can outfly the Red Baron any day, so he's obviously the man for the job. Also, he's willing to actually go up in the plane, so that's a pretty big draw right now. Yeah. Desperate times and all. After Curly gets hired, they cut to a creepy person. We can't see anything but, like, arms dropping off bags of fertilizer. And for some reason, this is ominous. We'll find out why later. Yeah, let's take a little break to talk about something here. This is just a really well-written episode. It is. It's the best written one we've gotten to so far. I feel like the writers had more fun with it, and they actually put more effort into making sure all of the parts of the mystery are there. And as you're watching the episode, you can actually kind of figure it out for yourself. The clues aren't all in the last five minutes or so. Okay, so let's jump back then. Fred is sitting there changing the tire, and Shaggy just wants to get out of there because he's a sane person who doesn't want to hang around with a ghost. But Fred really doesn't want to leave the Three Stooges in a place like this, and Curly Joe has to dust the corn in the morning, so what if the Red Baron shows up again and the Scooby Gang's not there to save the Three Stooges? And considering that they're the ones that pretty much pushed him into that job anyway, they all sucker Shaggy into staying. And Daphne says she feels sorry for the Red Bear in any way, because Curly Joe can fly circles around him. I don't know why she's feeling sorry for the ghost who's ruining the crops, but okay. I think she was just trying to emphasize how great of a flyer this new so-called pilot is. Anyway, a creepy mechanic walks up, and his name is Andrew Tara, and he sounds like he belongs on a Godfather movie or something. In both name and voice. He says that Mr. Siegfried, the airport manager, ordered him to fix the wheels. Shaggy says that we were just leaving. I would advise it strongly. This is not a fit place for man or beast. Or dogs. But Velma asks, what's so scary about a broken old, broken down old airport? There's bats. Suddenly the bats fly out because it's Scooby-Doo and you can't have somebody saying something like that without bats flying around. Shaggy says, there's non-scheduled bats! The bats are the only things the ghosts of the Red Baron will allow to fly in this airfield. Daphne repeats after him, the ghost of the Red Baron, as if they hadn't heard that yet. But it is the first time they called the Red Baron a ghost, so I guess that's what she meant. I would hope that they would either think that the Red Baron is some kind of title, since it is a World War I pilot... Or that they just would have assumed he was a ghost before because he was a World War I pilot. So this part's a little bit weird, but I mean... Yeah, whatever. Yeah, we can live with it. You will meet him before this night is over. Shaggy says he was afraid he'd say that. Ghosts are our business! And he was afraid Velma would say that. And they mention... Captain Curly, the new pilot, and how skillful he is, and suddenly the mechanic acts really shifty and suspicious. Oh, um, let, let me go get some new wheels so I can fix up this plane so Captain Curly can fly in the morning. Um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. And Shaggy is still worried, and they're trying to convince him that there's absolutely nothing to worry about. And we see the Red Baron's arm switching on the crop duster, making the plane chase Fred, Daphne, and Velma all around the hangar without a pilot until everything just kind of comes to a stop and Mr. Siegfried shows up. So Mr. Siegfried is the super logical one here who comes up and tells them, you know, this is scientifically impossible. There's no way this plane could have started up by itself and followed them around the hangar like that. I mean, you must I'm sure, have touched something. I'm sure there could have been some kind of electrical thing there where it would have started, but there's no way it could have turned and chased them. He... But nobody got hurt, so everything's okay. Yeah, but they would probably be safer if they left tonight. But Velma says that they're going to stay and investigate, so there isn't a ghost alive they can't expose. G -g ghosts Wait a second. Ghosts? 
being alive. Scooby is confused about this as well. Yeah, let's check on that one for a second. What are ghosts? Are they real? Or are they dead? <laughs> is a ghost haunting? Or is it really jaunting? jaunting. Merrily skipping about. Skipping about. Is a ghost ghost here for fun? 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 Or is it here to make you done? 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 We don't know know if ghosts are real or not. not. But we do know know. they're spooky. spooky. There are are many ghosts ghosts out there there. rummaging rummaging around. around. I suspect, I suspect that, that, they that they are both. Are both. If, if a ghost, ghost is, is ghost dead is and it's haunted, then, 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 then that means that it must also be alive. Be alive. The, spirit the spirit of the dead. Of the dead. Float, 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 Ghosts are real. I would imagine so anyway. You see, ghosts are honestly a compelling creature. The reality is we don't know what they are. We don't know if they exist or not. But I do believe, really, that if you see a ghost and it's haunting this world, then it's alive in some way. If it were dead, then it just wouldn't be. But it is. You see it possessing and scurrying around. That means something, doesn't it? Right? Okay, so now that we know about ghosts, which are totally real, and I totally believe in them no matter what my mama says, you have Shaggy freaking out because they've met two creeps, and he's really good at math, so he knows that two creeps is twice as creepy as one creep. And Velma says, we have to stay to make sure no one tampers with the plane. Shaggy was, of course, afraid she was going to say that. This joke comes up a lot in this episode. It's kind of a running gag for this one. There's number three. Now we see the three stooges sleeping in a house that's at the bottom of the control tower. And the Red Baron flies nearby and makes everything shake. I don't know if he crashed into something or what. And the three stooges get scared and run outside. The gang hears all the noise and comes running to help. And the Red Baron comes and buzzes really close to them. So everybody has to kind of dive to the ground and duck. And he drops something out of the plane before flying off. And Shaggy's sitting there, oh man, an inch closer, that would have hit me right in my... And then something actually hits him in the head. They find out that the thing that hit him in the head is a note saying, The Red Baron strikes again. Leave at once or face the inevitable. It's sounding a lot like it's Mr. Terra the mechanic with the way it's worded. Yeah. And he dives behind some mountains nearby, and they're all kind of waiting for a crash or, you know, some kind of noise, but they don't ever really hear anything. They go over there, and they don't really see anything. So who knows where the Red Baron and his plane have gone. Daphne's wondering if they imagined the whole thing. Shaggy jumps on that chance and says, let's go before our imaginations get us imagining again. And Velma's sitting there, okay, but... No matter what, that lump on Shaggy's head is no illusion. And Shaggy and Scooby are both like, what lump? There, There's no lump. To what be f- lump? To be fair, I didn't see a lump. Yeah, but the note that hit him on the head is definitely real. And Velma says, there's no time for this cowardice. Yeah, there is. Shaggy and Scooby are apparently devout cowards. So it's always time for cowardice. So they decide to stay and... Fred points out that it's safer in the creepy hangar than out on the creepy countryside. 
Because there's a padlock that they can put on the door. And the three stooges think that, yeah, there's safety in numbers and padlocks. But you know what gets past a padlock real easy? What? Somebody cutting through the chains, which is what the Red Baron does. He cuts through the chains, opens up the door, and sends a little toy plane that looks just like his big boy plane in to chase Scooby and Shaggy and everybody else around inside the hangar and try to scare him off again. Scooby starts chasing the plane, growling and stuff, and Daphne and Velma can't decide if he's scary Scooby or super Scooby. I mean, this is Scooby chasing things like we've never seen before. He looks like a regular police dog with this one. And then we find out why he's chasing it. He jumps on and goes for a ride and has the time of his life. Which, to be fair, looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. Eventually, Scooby falls off the plane. The Red Baron ghost appears and starts flying after Shaggy and Scooby without the plane, but breaks through a window when Shaggy and Scooby duck into the mystery machine for safety. And when they look out the window, the ghost is hopping away like a kangaroo for some reason. Boing. 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 With that sound effect, pretty much. Yeah. I did a very good job. You should go check it out. Velma just can't believe it. She's like, he flies, he floats, and now he hops. Daphne's theory is that maybe he doesn't believe in gravity. Because that's how gravity works. It only applies to you if you believe in it. Let's all take a moment to ponder that while we go to this commercial break. Uh, What's going on, you guys? I have have a lot of great memories with Scooby-Doo. I, I, I'm 22 years old to this day, and I can still watch, I just sit down and watch any of them, the episodes, movies, whatever. So I have a lot of great memories, but uh, my favorite memories are the ones where I'd watch the directed DVD movies with my sister and my mom. She was there most of the time. But, you know, back when we were a little bit younger, we could pop any of them in and just enjoy them as they were. You know, Monster in Mexico was always a good one. Uh, the Loch Ness Monster, you name it, we liked it. And then, you know, we'd always watch them together, and then as we got older, you know, we'd start riffing on them, we'd start realizing how, you know, uh, some of the adult humor, or just how funny it is in general, like how dumb Fred could be when Shaggy said a cop choo-choo in the Monster of Mexico. So it was just, it was a nice part of uh, our development and our friendship, and that's why I love Scooby-Doo. One of the many reasons. Hey, 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 it's Carrington from Real Dudes Podcast, and with me I have some fantastic co-hosts. Guys, why don't you introduce yourselves? This is Andrew, coming to you from Lynchburg, Ohio. This is Cody, coming from you also from Ohio. And this is Kyle, coming to you straight from the armpits of West Virginia. We are an indie gaming podcast. We all share a love for games, um, and you can check out our show on Podbean. Uh, just search for Real Dudes Podcast. You can also find us on iTunes, uh, Google Play, um, it, really any of the podcasting outlets that you like to use. Again, that is Real Dudes Podcast. Uh, be sure to check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, if you love video games, you will love our show. All right, so the Three Stooges are all packed because they decided they quit. They don't want to do this. And Velma keeps trying to make them stay. She tries giving them guilt trips and saying, but you're her last hope, and and things like that. And then she notices that there's a potted plant on Mr. Sawyer's desk, which is dying, even though they have a hanger full of fertilizer. And Sawyer says he fertilizes it every day, but it keeps getting worse. I'm pretty sure that if you fertilize a plant every day like that, you're still going to kill it. It's just going to be overfeeding it instead of underfeeding it. Yeah, but... This is enough to make Velma think that there's a clue in the fertilizer, and she goes off to check the hangar, telling Fred to keep trying to convince the Stooges to stay. In the meantime, Shaggy is trying to finish changing the mystery machine tire, because apparently Fred didn't finish when the creepy mechanic showed up and all. No surprise there. Yeah. And in comes the Red Baron, so Shaggy and Scooby dive into completely full oil drums, so they're covered in oil, And they duck down so the Red Baron doesn't see them. But then Velma walks in and starts to investigate when the Red Baron sneaks up behind her like some creepy dude. He is a creepy dude, though. He is. But it's not nice to go sneaking up on girls, especially ones you don't know. Anyway, as Velma runs away from the Red Baron, Scooby sticks his oil-covered tail out and splats him right in the face, which is great. 
So he bounces off blind, and Shaggy says, Good work! You're the first dog to ever get the Red Baron to fly blind. I'm sorry, but Snoopy's gonna have to have a word with you on that one. Yeah, there's a good chance Snoopy did already. Anyway, Velma it ducks into uh, one of the biplanes. The Red Baron reaches in and starts it, making it take off, because... These planes can apparently fly themselves, but I'm going to ignore that because this is a cartoon and it's hilarious. I just like to think that they're from the same world as Thomas the Tank Engine and they're all sentient beings. Okay then. Anyway, Shaggy is really worried and he's like, we have to help her. And then the Red Baron comes up and starts chasing him and Scooby since they've decided to stop hiding. While Velma's plane is doing loop-de-loops up in the air, and the Stooges see, and they're wondering who who that pilot is, because he's an even better pilot than Curly. And Curly's sitting there, I wonder which comic book he's using. Because in his world, every pilot uses comic books to know how to fly. But Shaggy comes running up and says, that's Velma up there! So the Stooges decide to go and help. But they forget something important. To start the plane. No. To tell the stewardess what they want for snacks. There's no stewardess in these planes. They're biplanes. Um, to make sure the wheels are attached. No. Curly forgot his comic books, so he has no idea how to fly. They get up in the air, but then he has no idea how to land or help Velma or anything. We see the Red Baron climbing a windmill, which strangely has basically an airplane cockpit. The Red Baron sits down at the cockpit and uses it to fly the little red plane after Shaggy and Scooby, who are hiding in an apple orchard. And he knocks a bunch of apples on their heads. Velma is up there trying to remember the word for help. And she's like, what was it now? February? March? April? Mayday! Mayday! What's she yelling Mayday for? Because Daphne, I don't know, she doesn't know either, so I guess it's more understandable that some two people wouldn't know that one person wouldn't know. And she doesn't understand why anybody would say Mayday on June 5th. So now we know it's the summer. So there's apples in the summer? Mm, I guess. We don't know where they are. Maybe the climate's different there. Maybe. So I usually think of apples as a fall food. Yeah, well, it's whatever. And Fred's sitting up there, something must be wrong. Mayday is the international distress signal. And finally, they figure out that she's on the plane. So now they're trying to save Velma, and the Three Stooges are up in the air trying to save Velma and themselves. Shaggy and Scooby have climbed the windmill and see the Red Baron who runs down the windmill, and they think they might have scared him off until he breaks off the ladder, and they're like, no, maybe not. And Curly, from up in the plane, is trying to get Fred to read him the comics on how to land the plane. But Fred keeps asking lots of questions instead of reading the instructions. Well, I mean, Kaylee, have you ever flown a plane? No. I haven't either, but I have played a lot of airplane video games. And landing the plane is the worst part. That doesn't surprise me. But Fred needs to read the instructions instead of asking what they're doing up there and what is going on and this, that, and the other thing. Just read the directions. Especially because it pretty much looks like Fred can see him out the window. So he should be able to see what's going on. Yeah. So... In the meantime, Shaggy and Scooby are messing with the airplane controls and and trying to figure out how to fly the little mini plane that's just so cute. And Shaggy about knocks himself off the windmill, but Scooby takes charge and makes the plane fly the other way and knock him back onto the windmill. And after Scooby saves him, Shaggy promises to never bark at Scooby again. Have you ever heard Shaggy bark at Scooby? No, and Scooby apparently hasn't either, because he looks very, very confused. I'm glad I'm not the only one, then. Finally, Fred agrees to read the landing instructions, but he tries to tell Velma that he's going to read them to her and the Three Stooges at the same time, but Velma 
Joe's radio is malfunctioning, so she doesn't hear any of this. And the Stooges are like, stop saying Velma and just read the directions! Shaggy gets the hang of flying the Red Baron's mini plane. Well, the Stooges finally manage to land, but Velma is still stuck in the air, and she's flying circles around the windmill, but doesn't see Shaggy and Scooby because she's busy trying to make her plane work. She flies close enough that Shaggy and Scooby get caught on the windmill blades, and Scooby falls off the platform, landing in Velma's plane while Shaggy's stu still stuck to the blades going around. And Velma says, here I am, chasing the ghost of the Red Baron in a plane I don't even know how to fly. At least things can't get any worse. And then notices Scooby, and she's very happy to see him. Because that is probably the best thing that could have happened, since Scooby is apparently the best pilot in the entire world. Even though nobody else realizes that. But Velma and Scooby crash and end up in a pond, but they're safe. And Shaggy eventually gets off the windmill, because it slows down enough for him to grab a pole and slide to the ground. Everybody somehow ends up meeting up next to these really tall weeds in the middle of nowhere. And they're all glad to see everybody's safe. And they're like, how did you get down safely? How did you, where were you? Are you okay? And so everybody's happy. But Velma is suspicious of these randomly tall weeds next to several boxes of weed killer. I mean, in my experience, weed killer and fertilizer do the exact opposite of what you want them to do. Yeah. Because I'm horrible at growing plants. Well, Velma comes up with the theory that maybe somebody has been dumping a bunch of fertilizer where these weeds are and putting weed killer in the fertilizer bags, which would explain all the dead crops. <gasps> really? Yeah. So after they come to that conclusion, Shaggy notices some strange tracks leading to an old barn and Velma has a theory that the tracks belong to the Red Baron's plane because there's two tired marks and a skid mark in the middle. And she wants to investigate, but there's an ultrasonic lock, and Shaggy really doesn't want to investigate. So he's told to go investigate the grist mill nearby. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a good... Oh, no, never mind. That's scary. Yeah. Shaggy decides that he and Scooby are always getting the short end of the stick, and... They always have to go to the scary places, and he thinks they should start their own protest group and call it Chicken's Lib. On their way to the grist mill, they notice an apple tree, and they're like, eh, we need a snack. And the stronger one should lift the weaker one up to go pick the apple. So, of course, Scooby lifts Shaggy. Well, after the last episode, yeah, I totally believe that. Yeah. So... Shaggy's dropping down apples and Scooby's gobbling them up and not saving any for Shaggy. Including the core, which you can eat on an apple. The, the seeds are usually not the best thing to eat. That's why you spit them out. Scooby didn't. Well, that's because he's a dog. And Shaggy is like, save some for me! Even though Scooby's paws are full of Shaggy, so I don't know how he thought Scooby was going to catch the apples. Honestly, I thought they were just going to drop them on the ground and then wash them off and then eat them. It's Shaggy and Scooby. Okay, so then they drop them on the ground and not wash them off, but still eat them. Anyway, Shaggy tells Scooby he's nothing but a hound dog, and Scooby agrees. He's like, how true, how true. Is Scooby a hound dog? Kinda. I don't, I don't know. Anyway... The Stooges wake up in a plane and decide to go check on Velma because they don't know if she got down safely because they were busy sleeping in their plane. But the Red Baron walks in and starts dumping fertilizer into the crop duster, so the Stooges hide in empty bags of fertilizer, which caused Curly to sneeze, giving them away, and the Red Baron hears the sneeze and decides to tickle the bags that they're hiding in to make sure he has the right ones, I guess. But it's kind of a funny scene. The tickling makes them hop into an empty jeep, which the Red Baron drives away, and he uses his ultrasonic remote to open the stone wall and the barn door that Velma and everybody couldn't get into, and a secret door in the back of that barn. So everybody follows, and Daphne bumps into a cowbell. I will deal with them later, but first 
I have a field of corn to fertilize. Ha ha ha. Boing, boing, boing. Chris's bad German accent aside. <laughs> Everybody is locked into that secret room with no easy way out. And we cut back to Shaggy and Scooby who fall into the water and get caught on the mill, the, the water wheel part of the grist mill. And jump in through the window. And when they land on the floor, Shaggy says, where do we go from here? So, of course, the floor breaks and they fall into the basement. I mean, what else were you expecting to happen? Well, Scooby totally expected it and asked Shaggy, when are you going to learn? Shaggy says he'll learn someday. No, I won't. And then notices a box with the sheet on it. And Shaggy's sitting there, what's that? Scooby thinks it might be a square ghost. Now, being the 70s, I'm not sure if he means an uncool ghost or a ghost with four equal angles and four sides. Well, considering it's shaped like a cube, I think he actually meant square, like the shape. Anyway, Shaggy pulls off the sheet and the crate says, Caution, do not open, danger. And Shaggy's just dying to know what's inside. But Scooby's scared. As he should be. The box has danger on it. Why would you write danger on a box if it's not dangerous? Yeah. And Shaggy's like, it's just a box. What do you think is inside? It's probably a box full of ghosts. That's what Scooby thinks. He puts the sheet on and does his very best ghost impression, which is actually really good. Better than some of the ghosts we've seen on episodes of Scooby-Doo. But they open the box. It's not a box of ghosts. It's a box of springs that go flying everywhere. And Scooby gets them stuck on his paws, which you'd think would be horrible. But he starts bouncing on them. Boing, boing, boing. And it looks like a lot of fun. And Shaggy says, Scooby's suffering from a case of spring fever. And everybody face palms. I might have laughed. Anyway, Scooby's bouncing gets out of control and he splats into a wall, breaking the plaster and revealing a locked door. Shaggy decides to knock on it since they can't open it. And Mo answers from the other side because he's standing there with the rest of the gang. He says, who is it? It's me. Me who? Me who is trapped on the opposite side of you who. And Velma says it's Shaggy. It's Velma. And Scooby's like, really? Scooby is just on a roll today with all of the sarcasm and stuff. He still hasn't been offered a Scooby snack, has he? No, poor Scooby. That's probably why he's so annoyed at everybody. Shaggy finds a saw and cuts through the door. And then points out that there's no exit from either side. But Mo gets the idea to tie the saw to the propeller of the plane and use that to cut through the hangar door. Which works. Because they've done that on a movie before. Yep. We see the Red Baron flying a crop duster to ruin what Shaggy keeps calling the juicy corn. So Shaggy and Scooby decide to go to the rescue and they run straight up the pole of the windmill. And they make the tiny Red Baron plane chase the big Red Baron and distract him until he decides to land. Then the Red Baron uses a remote to call his big red plane and escape. The Stooges, Fred, Daphne, and Velma all get in the duster plane and take off after the Red Baron, forgetting the comics again. When Shaggy and Scooby realize what happened, Scooby runs for the comic book and hops on the tiny plane so Shaggy can fly him over to where the others are in the air. Shaggy flies him over and Scooby starts to read to the other plane which is upside down and Curly's all confused he's like an upside down dog who reads that's what he's getting hung up on right now yep so Mo tells him to listen and do whatever Scooby says and he does and gets the plane turned right side up and while Scooby's reading the instructions he notices the red baron and says to follow him he whistles to Shaggy who immediately catches on And makes them chase the Red Baron. And the Red Baron ends up crashing and pretty much destroying his plane. He loses his tail and his wings. And so he's not going to fly in that anymore. But he jumps in the Jeep to escape. So the gang has the bright idea to drop a bunch of fertilizer or weed killer 
on top of the Red Baron. Which makes him crash the Jeep and fall out. And Scooby and his tiny plane land right on the Red Baron. And if he wasn't a ghost before, he probably is now, because if it's weed killer, it's poison. And if it's fertilizer, I'm pretty sure it's still poison. Yeah, people don't eat fertilizer. Mr. Sawyer shows up in a tow truck and asks who the Baron is, so Scooby unmasks him and reveals Siegfried. Fred says he posed as the Red Baron to scare away all the legitimate pilots. And then Velma goes, Then he switched weed killer and fertilizer to ruin the crops. Shaggy demands that he tell them why he wanted to ruin all the juicy corn. The county is planning to buy the airport and surrounded farms to expand it into a jet field. And all the good guys take turns saying this entire sentence. And you wanted to buy the farms cheap and the runway cheap and then sell them to the county for big profit. And Shaggy decides to be silly and says, Curses, Mr. Baron, foiled again! Mr. Sawyer throws them all a big feast for a job well done. And Shaggy holds up a four foot long salami and says, how are we going to slice this without a knife? I don't know why he's assuming we don't have a knife. Apparently they didn't. So Curly took it and had somebody start up the plane and uses the propeller to slice the salami, which Shaggy attempts to eat all of at the same time. So I don't know what the point of slicing it was, but it all kind of goes flying out of his sandwich and right into Scooby's mouth. And Scooby was very happy because he finally got his Scooby snack. Yes. Even though it was salami. Daphne says she understands about the weed killer, but what about how he hopped ten feet in the air? And Fred wants to know how he floated like a ghost. And Scooby apparently has put everything together, and he goes flying by in the Red Baron costume hanging from a hook and rope, saying, scooby dooby doo And then he gets off the hook... And demos the bouncing and jumps right out of the boots, which have the coiled springs on the inside. I'm not sure that would work in real life. I would think the springs need to be on the outside of the boots. But it's Scooby showing off how smart he is, so. Here's a science experiment for everybody. With parental permission and supervision, if you are required to have that, put some springs inside your shoes and see how well you bounce. But what I really want to know is why the Red Baron wanted to bounce around. Was that faster than running or easier? What's your idea? It was probably more fun. And I think that's a good enough reason. But if anybody has any other ideas, let us know in the Facebook group. So what did we learn in this episode? We learned that sometimes everybody just randomly decides to call Fred Freddy for absolutely no reason. Yeah, they called him that for the whole episode, which is... Not typical for anything other than pup name Scooby-Doo, but that's okay. I have a feeling we had different writers for this episode than we have for previous ones, because it just had a different feel the entire time, and I feel like they put more effort into it than they have been for some of the other new Scooby-Doo movies. We also learned that Scooby is not only the strongest, but also the smartest person on the team. I said person on purpose, because he is clearly a human trapped in a dog's body. Anyway, he was hilarious, and I felt like there were a lot of decent jokes in this that I definitely missed as a kid, but I understand them now. If you have any theories about what was going on with this one, get in touch with us over on Twitter at Medley Kids Pod, or in the Facebook group Medley Kids Podcast and Scooby-Doo Discussion Group. Which is moderated by Tiff, because she is awesome, and we love her so much, and you should too. And if you want to help support the show then you go check out the shop or the Patreon we have started. Links to both of those are in the show notes. Also, if you like hearing other things from us, you can check out Play Comics, where I look at video games based on comic properties, and Kaylee joins in all the time, and it's not always family-friendly, but if you're an adult, go check it out. Thank you to Dave Seste for the music called Night Surfing. And the next time you ruin a bunch of corn while you're pretending to be some sort of weird German kangaroo. You would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for us meddling kids. Meanwhile, there's a random cat in the background of everything who won't stop making noise. She just wants to be Scooby-Doo. She'd probably be scared of Scooby. Probably. At least we know it's not Thor because he'd want to go play with Scooby. That's true. He thinks he's a puppy.